The Titanic disaster left a huge mark on our history. People have created movies, books, legends, and alternative theories about this terrible catastrophe. But more than 3,000 years before the Titanic tragedy, there was another shipwreck. The sunken ship could have led to economic crises in several countries, some victories, and a few defeats. Today's story would be different if this ship had not sunk. In 1982, scientists and marine researchers discovered a sunken giant ship with precious cargo on board. It was found off the eastern shores of Elubrion, now modern Turkey. That cargo was tons of rare tin metal. Scientists analyzed the ship and found that it belonged to the late period of the Bronze Age, around 1500 BCE. At that time, bronze was cutting-edge technology. People made swords, spears, arrows, jugs, jewelry, agricultural tools, and many other items out of bronze. The countries that owned bronze were the strongest technologically and economically. Bronze was a resource that people used to conquer other states. This metal is mainly made from copper and tin. There were no problems with copper in ancient times. It was a fairly common metal throughout Eurasia. But it took many resources to get tin. It was costly and was found only in certain geological deposits. The kings of ancient times spent a lot of money and resources to extract this metal. They also fought for it with other kings. So there was one of the largest collections of unprocessed copper and tin on the Elubrian ship. With a cargo on board, people could make 11 tons of the best quality bronze. This amount would be enough to make swords, arrows, and armor for about 5,000 people. This amount would be enough to create an entire army that could play a vital role in any conflict. But it was not the cargo that struck the scientists, but the place where ancient people extracted the tin. According to chemical analysis, one-third of the tin on the Elubrian ship was extracted in a prehistoric mine on the territory of modern Uzbekistan in Central Asia. A small community of mountain shepherds and farmers mined tin and exported it to the markets of the Mediterranean Sea. And now, the question that baffled scientists – how did these people do it? No planes, cars, trains, or asphalt roads existed in the Bronze Age. The distance between the mine in Uzbekistan and where the ship sank is about 2,000 miles over rough terrain. The long way goes through forests, mountain slopes, steppes, rivers, and lakes in different states. And don't forget about looters and gangs of thieves. It's dangerous and challenging for a person to walk such a distance. But if you have 10 tons of precious metal with you, then this mission seems impossible. Archaeologists and scientists from different countries teamed up to find out how people had managed to transport metals so far. They discovered that Uzbekistan's local miners and farmers had access to an extensive communication system between the countries. It was a giant international trading web that provided tin to the whole world. It worked with the help of thousands of different people. Just imagine how complex and thought through this logistics chain was. Perhaps miners loaded the metal on camels and donkeys, then transferred it to nomads. Those guys traveled through the steppes for weeks and negotiated with ancient custom services. Afterward, the nomads loaded the cargo into boats and rowed across the mouth of the river. From there, other people picked the cargo up and brought it to the eastern shores of Turkey. Everyone received some money from this and had benefits. And then, these metals were loaded onto ships and sent on long voyages. People from different trades took part in this mission. They were wealthy nobles, poor servants, robbers, gang leaders, and many more. To understand how large and complex this network was, imagine a small field of oil rigs in central Oklahoma. And this field provides energy and fuel for the entire United States. There should be a lot of logistics change to spread the power throughout the country. The cargo that the Elubrium ship was supposed to deliver could have changed the history of the whole world. The country where it was going could have had economic growth and an increase in political influence. Kings would have changed, some countries would have vanished, and others would have been born. The level of life would have fallen and risen. Millions of people would have migrated. Since during all this time, tin was boosting our species' development. Bronze was an indicator of the level of life in ancient times. With the help of this precious metal, scientists can see the development or decline of the economies of the old world. But let's look at today's world. 
What is an unusual indicator of a country's economy now? How about the index of mosquito bites? The more houses remain in poor condition, with broken windows and insufficient heating, the more mosquitoes bite people. There are breeding grounds for mosquitoes in backyards with swimming pools, where a lot of grass grows. When the standard of living worsens and wages fall, people take less care of their houses. At this point, mosquitoes begin to bite them. Another unusual index of the economy is high heels. During an economic crisis, people buy higher heels to look brighter and more attractive. This way, they subconsciously escape real problems and find themselves in a fantasy fashion world. For example, during the Great Depression, women bought more high heels than shoes with low heels. There's also the cardboard indicator. If people start buying and using a lot of cardboard, there's an economic upswing ahead. If the use of cardboard is reduced, we're in for a crisis. This economic indicator is simple to understand, as many goods are packed in cardboard boxes. If large companies buy cardboard, it means that people buy many things from them. Sales are increasing. Bosses and top managers hire new people, stimulating economic growth. In 2008, during the banking crisis, the revenue from one of the largest cardboard manufacturers decreased by almost 50% because people began to save money and didn't buy unnecessary things. When a country's economy falls, the level of gardening begins to grow. During severe economic crises, people grow vegetables and fruits in their backyard to save money on food and earn a little extra on sales. During the crisis of 2008, the number of horticultural households increased by 19%. During an economic crisis, people are more likely to start a long-distance relationship. Many people are ready to do anything when they get fired and their money runs out. So, if they get a good job offer in another city, they'll move there. According to a social study, people are more willing to sacrifice their relationships and move to another town for work instead of staying together but without money. Thus, the number of long-distance relationships grows during crises. In 2009, the cost of baked beans in the UK increased by 23%. This happened because people started buying a lot of food in cans. It can be stored for a long time and not deteriorate, and such food is quite cheap. An ideal choice during a crisis if you want to save money. When the country's economy is falling, popcorn sales are growing. People go to movie theaters to forget about their real-life problems. Most of these problems happen in times of crises. That's why popcorn sales grow. In this case, we could say that ticket sales also grow during tough times. But people don't always go to theaters to enjoy movies. They often buy popcorn to watch a movie at home. Now, it's pretty sad, but the worse the economy, the more bicycle accidents occur on the streets. This happens because people try to save money on gasoline and the maintenance of their cars. Therefore, many people switch to a bicycle. And the more cyclists, the more bike accidents. Do you know those cheap paperback romance novels with almost identical images on the cover? There are more of them in times of crises. Some publishers noted that sales of such books had grown during the economic crisis in 2008. Me? I eat more chocolate when times are bad. When times are good, I instead eat more chocolate. <laughs> what can I say? I'm easy to soothe. <laughs>